Hey, what's going on everyone? This is iReviews back with another video and iOS 18.5 is finally here after going through four beta stages and the RC version. So this is a really important update, especially for anyone that has a device that won't actually support iOS 19 because this is one of the last updates that you will get on your device. So in today's video, I will show you guys a few settings that are really important that I think you should change immediately once you have updated your device to the new iOS 18.5. Now, of course, there will be newer settings and older settings that are really important. So first of all, I would suggest that you head on to your settings, go to the general settings here and go to software update and make sure that you have your automatic updates turned on. Now, what will happen is that Apple will be releasing also iOS 18.6 is being tested right now and it will come, but it will come probably somewhere in July. So that's a lot of time and like a couple of months until that gets released. Now, in the meantime, we will have new updates released like point updates, most likely one or two will be released in the meantime. So what I suggest you do is make sure that you have your auto updates enabled so you get those really important security fixes and bug fixes on your device. Another thing here, if you have a device that supports Apple intelligence, but you're not using it, then make sure that it's actually turned off. I know a lot of people have turned off Apple intelligence, but with the update of iOS 18.4, a lot of users have actually reported Apple intelligence turning on by itself. So if you're not using it and you have previously turned it off, make sure you go ahead and check it again and see if it has turned on by itself or not. If it has, you can go ahead and simply switch it off from here. Now with iOS 18.5, Apple has added a new feature, a banner that you will see at the top whenever you perform the back tap feature on your iPhone. Whether you're doing double tap or triple tap, you will get a banner right here at the top, kind of like a notification indicating that you have invoked that feature, but you can actually turn it off. So if that is bothering you and you don't want to have it, you can just go ahead and head on to your settings under accessibility here, go to touch and then scroll all the way down. Here you will have your back tap feature feature and then you will have this button right here this is new with 18.5 show banner you can just go ahead and switch it off from here that way you don't get that banner and on the screen of your iphone whenever using back tap Another new setting can be found for screen time, but you will have to go to notifications, not screen time, head on to notifications and find screen time. When you go here, if you scroll all the way down, you will have something called customized notifications. Now, right here, you will be able to enable notifications, actually customize your notifications for screen time. Now, I only have one option here for the weekly report where I can choose to get or not get the notification for the weekly report. But if you're using other features, Features of the screen time, then you will have more options here. And of course, this will allow you to go ahead and customize the screen time notifications based on your needs. Now with the mail app on iOS 18.5, we have a new feature, actually a new setting that we can change within the mail app because this was also a setting that you could change previously, but you had to go through the settings app. And now when you want to show or hide the context photos, you can actually do that straight from the mail app. So you just tap on the three dots and right here, you can go ahead and change your context photo, whether you want to show it or not. So if you just want to hide the context photo, now you can can go ahead and switch it here without having to go through the settings app. Another thing I suggest you do once you have updated your device to the new iOS 18.5 is make sure that you have the battery limit set as it should. So when you go here under the battery settings and you go to charging, you will have here a slider, which I suggest, especially if you have a newer device and you want to make sure that the battery health will stay good for a really long time, make sure that you actually turn this at around 90% here. I think this is like the best spot to be. You'll get the most battery but at the same time your iphone won't charge at 100 percent which means that it will actually preserve a lot of the battery health this is in my opinion the best option to go go with 90 percent it's actually really good and this will make sure that you get the most battery without damaging the battery health of your iphone Next up, we're moving here to the Photos app. So 
add, go to actually to the apps here and then go to photos. So let's just find the photos right here. And we have here a new option that actually has been added with 18.4 show recently viewed and recently shared photos. Now what this will do is that it adds an album to the front page of your photos app showing the recent photos that you have viewed on the photos app or the recent photos that you have shared. Now, of course, someone might have like privacy concerns about this. You don't want that to show on the front page of your photos app, then go ahead and just turn it off from here. So under the photo settings, show recently viewed and shared, just go ahead and turn that off. Now, another thing I suggest you do is change your privacy settings, especially the location settings. So when you go to your location services, if you have it turned on, you will see the list of the apps that do have access to your location. Now, most of the apps don't actually need to have access to your location. So make sure to switch it off. If you have an app that needs to have location services, then go ahead and just choose while using the app. That's the best option in my opinion. Or if you just want to have like the best privacy, make sure to turn off precise location. Now, of course, precise location should be turned on for any navigation apps that you're using or maybe any apps that you use to track like your fitness. But otherwise, the other apps don't really need to know your precise location. Other settings that I think you should change right here under the privacy settings are the access to your stuff like your files, your contacts, your media, then you will have your photos here. And then of course, all the Bluetooth, the camera, the local network, your microphone, you should go here and check which apps do actually have access to all of these things. And I suggest you to do this and every once in a while check this because we install apps all the time on the device. That's why I suggest this setting to be changed every time I do one of these videos, because in the meantime, from one update to another, you probably have installed a few apps. And a lot of times while setting up an app, we will just go through like different pop ups and maybe just allow the app to have access to something like we, that we don't want to like in this case to so the microphone, for example, so you can just go ahead and turn them off from here. So make sure you check all of these and make sure only the apps that you want are actually enabled. Another thing I suggest you do is head on to face ID and passcode and then scroll all the way down here and you will have here allow access when locked. Now what you can do here is choose way what you actually want to allow to be enabled or be accessible even when your iPhone is locked. Now there are a lot of things that I suggest you turn off here. For example, the notification center, your iPhone might be locked, but still can have access to the notification center. That means that someone can actually read your notifications, or maybe even reply to your messages, return missed calls and all that. So make sure you go ahead, check this and make sure you turn off here as much as possible if it's possible, just turn them off completely because you don't want anyone to have access to any of these things when your iPhone is still locked. Another thing I suggest you do is head on to sounds and haptics. And what you will find here is an option called volume limit. When when you go here, you can set the maximum volume limit for your device. Now, of course, once you enable this, it will be at 90, like the amount is 90, the maximum is 90 here. When you turn it off, it turns to 100. But I suggest that you use this at least at 90, especially if you have someone else that does also use your iPhone or iPad, whatever that is. You don't want anyone to blast any music or something at 100% for a long time on your iPhone, because that will probably damage the speakers of your iPhone. And last but not least, head on to the general settings and make sure you go to background app refresh and turn here off as much as possible. Any app that you know doesn't need to be refreshing on the background should be turned off from here. This will have a huge impact, not only on the battery life of your iPhone, but the performance as well, especially if you have an older device. So that is it for this video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, smash that like button. And of course, subscribe for more videos like this. And I will see you on the next one.